lottery is so ridiculously fun, so exciting, so cathartic, that you have absolutely no excuse, if you haven't tried it yet, to take a ceramic class with real clay and dig your fingers into the soft, mushy goodness and sculpt it and let your imagination create these forms that will soon turn into hard stone and glass and beautiful sculptures. You are so missing out. Every city has several pottery studios. Every large town has at least one or two. And even small towns often have some community studios that you can easily find. Find them. I have this dark chocolate clay and I have this very white clay called B Mix, which is mostly porcelain. It's almost as white as porcelain. I'm gonna cut a big, nice chunky slab of each, maybe two slabs, and two nice slabs of the B Mix. Stuff is like cream cheese, feels so nice. Oh. We're gonna smush each of these down a little bit. Free massage. Oh, there's a lot of tension in you, I can feel it. I'm gonna work all that out. Oh. Then we're gonna take each of these to the slab roller. Set it to about three eighths of an inch. You gotta put the clay in between two pieces of canvas so it doesn't stick to the wheel. And then we're gonna roll out our three eighth inch slab. We're gonna smooth these out a little just to take the texture out that the roller put in. Now comes the fun part. With our needle tool, we're gonna cut random wild shapes out of one color and then try to cut the same shapes out of another color and fit them together like a puzzle. And then we're gonna do the reverse with the other two slabs. I've never done this before. I just imagined it. Let's see if it works. I can't tell you how relaxing and satisfying this is to cut this clay out. It's like more fun than a kid has with any toy. And yet you're making a real adult useful product. It's almost not fair. Okay, to get the shapes to fit as close as possible, we're gonna take these exact shapes that were just cut out of here and we're gonna trace them on the dark clay and see if we can get it fairly good match. This is so fun. I can't tell you how much fun this is. This is like too much fun. It's not fair. Let's see. Oh, look at that. I just realized I can kill two birds with one stone by putting the white clay cut out right into the brown clay that I just made. How did I not see this? Not only is this more efficient, there no clay is wasted at all, but it's so fun and it, it, it allows the project to move faster. Now looking back, I could have just picked this entire thing up, put it on top of the brown clay, traced all the pieces exactly the same, and I'd have the same pattern reversed in brown and white. But live and learn, like I said, this is my first time. I'm just making this up as I go.
once again, I'm going to smooth these to take the texture of the roller and the fabric out of it. This is kind of smearing the colors, which I don't care. I think it's kind of a cool effect, but we still don't know what the finished product will look like. Now I'm just tracing out a vase shape, trying to make a good one. Just drawing over the clay first, not actually cutting all the way through until I get the shape I really like. We're going to use the rest of these slab scraps to make one or two more vases by smushing them together, running through the slab roller again. Now we arrange these slab pieces into a kind of pinwheel. Here's our scraps. Take that back to the slab roller. Now we bevel cut the edges so that they'll fit together neatly. We cut them at a 45 degree angle roughly. And then we score the beveled edges. And we're going to put a softer, wetter, liquidy clay into these edges, which will become a glue. And the scoring will hold the glue better, so when we put these edges together, they will cement together and become one whole piece, hopefully. getting the wet clay or the slip ready to paint on.
Then we load all the pieces into this giant oven called a kiln that can get anywhere from 1,000 to 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is as hot as some volcanoes. Another way you can very easily build structures without needing to know how to use a wheel is coil building. Just like playing with Play-Doh, you just simply break off a piece and roll it into a coil, a little snake. Make sure you name each snake appropriately or they won't be instilled with the correct self-esteem to make the rest of your project work the way you want it to. Remember, if you speak kindly to the clay, the clay will behave kindly for you. There's no right or wrong way to make a coil. Make it as thin or as thick as you like, but as you make them, you'll start to feel what kind of thicknesses work for you. So for the bottom of this piece, I'm just going to coil up my first coil for the bottom. And the idea is after you make the structure you want, you smooth it out. You can leave the coils, they're kind of a cool texture, or you can just smooth it out to whatever width or length you like. And if you're not happy with it, you can always add to it. As you start to build higher, you can also smooth the walls and shape them the same way you're smoothing the bottom. Kind of mold them to what you want. And you can continue this process over and over again as the clay slowly, slowly hardens and becomes different amounts of workable at each stage of dryness that you'll get used to. You can also do a pinch pot, which is simply taking a ball of clay, just like it sounds, pinching it from the middle, and slowly turning it into a type of little bowl, or any shape you want that you can pinch it into.
go have some fun with Clay.